Well, having been born in 1921 and uh, therefore went through a depression that the world has never seen since then, in the 30s, it meant that uh, growing up in the country on the Gaspi Coast, uh, where there was very, very few things for anybody to do. You had to make your own entertainment. In other words, uh, there wasn't even uh, ice capacity for you to skate. We skated in field, ro frozen brooks, etc., and, and, and skated on the uh, Bay of Chaleur, which flows in those days, the temperature would go down so low that the bay would freeze and you could skate and create a hockey game on the, on the, on the ice, yeah. you know. So there were none of the community facilities. So that taught you to be creative uh, because uh, I, I, uh, my family couldn't afford. My dad worked all summer and in the winter in those days, everything closed up. There were no, the roads were not kept open. You had to go by horse and sleigh to anywhere you went, or by train if you wanted to go to Quebec or Montreal from the gas because you had to go by train. It was the only way of transportation. So those challenges that you have makes you uh, very creative as to how you deal with that. Secondly, uh, my dad could, uh, you know, I went to school for grade nine in Port Daniel. That's as high as the school went. You had to then go away from your community for 10 and 11 in Quebec. So my sister, fortunately, was a, a teacher because I was the baby of a family of five. And therefore, uh, my, my uh, two sisters and two brothers were way ahead of me. So she took me away for grade 10 to St. John's, Quebec, at the age of 14. That's one year younger than you. Uh, so I had to leave home very early. And so it makes you independent and very, uh, you know, you can't phone home for money. You can't go home and uh, raid the refrigerator. You had to make it on your own. My first paycheck was $12 a week. I had to pay $8 board. Two dollars for transportation to the job I had, and two dollars in the bank. Wow. Those things make you very independent and very conscious, conscious that you have to, you're on your own, you either got to make it or you're going to be left on the sideline. So those things develop you to be aggressive and uh, to uh, be very frugal with, with your money, and to know that uh, you uh, you either make it or you don't. Sure. Simple as that. Now along the way, I had a lot of people help me because they knew that I was desirous of being a success. So they would. Uh, the lady I boarded with was very good to me, uh, and uh, then I worked for a company that transferred me from Montreal to Toronto. That's when I got involved in a lot of things in Toronto. Well, entrepreneurship is an individual, a human, that has a desire to do something very special in life and looks for opportunities uh, to be creative uh, in uh, finding uh, a, a new way of accomplishing uh, what they want to do. So an entrepreneur, in my opinion, is someone that has a vision that they have a contribution to make in life and they want it to be very special and they want it to be a success. So they approach it from a determination point of view as well as uh, an independent point of view. In other words, yes, they may seek advice from others, but they have their plan. They have a plan. And then they, uh, and they uh, decide how they're going to implement that plan. That's an entrepreneur. My favorite aspect of being a leader is, uh, uh, is to, first of all, to be involved with people. I think you have to have the desire to be involved with people. That you, you, uh, you, you want to be around people. You want to be where people are, etc. Uh, secondly, 
uh, you uh, you have to uh, decide that you want to that that life is a road map, and you have to determine where you want to go. And to do that, you must have a road map to do, to get there. And there's many side trips, etc., challenges along the way. But uh, to be a leader, you you have to have a vision of what you want to accomplish. And you can't accomplish it alone. You must realize that you have to be a team leader. You have to be part of a team. Uh, whether it's your family or your friends or the people you meet out in the community, etc. But always remember you have to be a part of a team. That uh, you can't accomplish it alone. Whatever you set out to do in life. You have to be a team leader. Those knowing that that you haven't all the answers, you haven't all the, uh, the uh, your plan is not perfect, but others can help you with that plan and contribute towards it. So therefore you have to involve people, either your family or friends or people in the community. Always be eager to listen to suggestions and ideas. But you must have a plan that you want to attain a certain objective. But then you have to say, who do I involve to get to accomplish, to complete the plan? Mm -hmm. You've got to work hard. You've got to do your homework. Uh, you've got to uh, uh, be uh, independent. Uh, not not in, independent that you don't want to be involved with people, etc. But to show that you have confidence in yourself. Confidence in yourself is extremely important because it generates, if you have confidence in yourself, other people feel you have that. You don't have to tell them, I'm confident in myself, because the way you operate and the way you, you uh, express yourself clearly indicates that you are confident. Sure. sure so you true. have to build confidence, you have to have confidence in yourself for other people to have confidence in you.